JP Morgan strategist is predicting that Joe Biden's going to drop out of the 2024 presidential race. He must be listening race. to this podcast. I think he is. <laughs> I think he is. Uh, because they're saying President Biden will eventually decide to stand down and not seek re-election this year. Citing health reasons. That's the, yeah, a top J.P. Morgan Chase strategist predicted over the weekend. Uh, Michael, uh, probably didn't used to be his first name, who heads the market of investment strategy unit in the bank's asset management division, believes that the, not normally the people you go to for political <laughs> opinions, but whatever, believes that the 81-year-old Biden will drop out of the race sometime between Super Tuesday and the November election citing health reasons. Yeah, but this is important for for investments. I guess so. Yeah, they yeah. look at stuff like they that. They have to, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, when is Super Tuesday? March 5th. Okay, so between Super Tuesday and uh, the November election, our call on this podcast, which we've been saying for um, I don't know, four or five months, something like that, has been that he's going to drop out, I think. In or drop dead. <laughs> one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> um, that it's going to happen in August, uh, maybe late August, or maybe early September. And the reason being is that the uh, the the uh, convention, the Democratic convention, is August 20th ish, something like that. And if they For them wait to select Gavin Newsom, if he gets the nomination officially, if he accepts it at the convention. Then if he drops out the week after, then the actual DNC gets to pick who the nominee is going to be. They don't have to do any kind of primary. Mm -mm. They don't have to ask people to come and vote or anything like that. So once he's uh, accepted the nomination, he can drop out immediately afterwards. And the people who were on the Demo Democratic National Committee can pick who the nominee is going to be. And then they, they have to get like, what, 200,000 signatures per state to get them on the ballot? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, um, no, no. I think it's uh, oh, you're, just, you're talking about libertarian oh, rules. This is a Democrat rule. Yeah, they it's just 25. switch it out. Yeah, it's it's just 25 yeah. for democracy. Okay, you know, it's 200,000 if you're a libertarian, <laughs> someone who's not a Republican or a Democrat. Yeah. Okay. So, not actually 200,000, by the way. It's 56,000 in Tennessee and various, various state to state. You know, I think, That's true. I think Texas is really bad. I think uh, I think New York is pretty bad with that. Other states are a little bit easier. Um, is Illinois bad too? Tasker Warlock says Illinois is bad too. I would, I would not doubt it whatsoever, but I have seen some libertarians on the ballot in Illinois. I don't know what the rules are. Uh, this brings me to, uh, we've said Gavin Newsom a lot, but I'm, I, I'm curious as to why Michelle Obama is out here talking politics so much lately. Uh Oh, and th this, this could potentially be a, a problem because I think she actually has a better chance than Gavin Newsom at winning oh, she, if yeah. she gets thrown in late like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's out here talking. Which, him. I don't know how she could win with the patriarchy and the racism. I know. It would be impossible. <laughs> you know? After as bad as this, the, this country is Surely as Surely no bad. woman's going to be president just simply because of the patriarchy. I mean, hate is but as bad as But a woman of color? Been. No, it's not possible. You're telling me that most people are going to vote for a woman of color? Well, I mean, if she loses, that'll be why. Yeah, for sure. No, if she runs, she'll win. I, I actually one hundred percent. I think that could be the. She'll case. beat Trump. She'll beat Nikki Haley. She'll beat all of them. Absolutely. And, and you know who the most upset person is going to be about this? Hillary Clinton. <laughs> 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 Michelle Obama did not kill herself. Just so everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see what yeah. she had to say. But then also, how are they going to keep spinning the narrative? Which narrative? Of, the, of this patriarchal racist society if we elect a black woman to be our president. Well, you know Michelle Obama's actually a man anyway, so, <laughs> I mean, that'll be why she gets in. Manchelle Obama. <laughs> <laughs> That's another conspiracy theory I've seen online. Um, she will... I'm not... I can't see any way she loses. She could literally go out there and say, like, wh whatever. She could go out there and be a libertarian and still win. I, I, think, I think that's probably true she could go out there true. she could be like trump and, and murder someone on fifth avenue <laughs> she could say that if she wins the presidency that she would drop a nuclear bomb on new york city michael obama <laughs> the actual name and she would still win let's see what she had to say is there any way she loses if she runs or if she gets nominated by the dnc because biden drops out um no, I think I think she would win. She wins. Yeah. Against anyone. I think she would. There's no one else. Like if I think Biden were 15 years younger, I think he would win easily. I think what kills him 
is his age for like most people. Like most people, yeah. yeah. Um, I I think what kills him is is just how clearly dementia ridden his brain is. Mm-hmm. And uh, if it weren't for that, he would have a little bit more support. Uh, so yeah. I think she would probably win. Let's see what she had to say. You know, are we moving at all fast enough? What are we doing about education? Mm. Are people going to vote? And why aren't people voting? Are we too stuck to our phones? I mean, those are the things that keep me up because you you don't have control over them. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, where are people, where are we in this? You know, where are our hearts? What's going to happen in this next election? I am terrified about what could possibly happen because our leaders matter. Who we select, who speaks for us, who holds that bully pulpit, it affects us in ways that sometimes I think people take for granted. You know, the fact that people think that government, eh, you know, does it really even do anything? And I'm like, oh my God, does government do everything for us? And we cannot take (laughs) this democracy for granted. And sometimes I, I- Okay. Ugh. Well, there is a big problem right there is the last thing she said. Government does everything for us. By the way, she only said about 10% more than Kamala Harris says in an answer to a question. I mean, that was just a bunch of word salad dancing around. You know, she hardly said anything until the end Mm -hmm. of that video. Um, does, Does government do everything for us? You people who think government doesn't do anything, you know? Yeah, another what Bailey just pointed out. She's a, she's losing sleep because this is just people voting or not. It's just something that they can't control, and she's losing sleep over this. She wishes they keeps could control her up it. At night. She wants to control the voting process. Yeah, you know, keeps her up at night. The idea that Trump could be president or Biden's going to lose this, and people need to realize that government does everything for us. They have their hand in everything. And there's the problem, by the way, folks, that this doesn't have to go with this conversation, but you want an answer to all the problems that we talk about all the time. It's the fact that the government does too much stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. It's the fact that they have too much power and they are, it is too consequential who was in power. We in talk Washington. on this show all the time that if, if they didn't have that much power, it wouldn't matter who was leading. Mm-hmm. You know, it would just be another president. Yeah. That would take care of some. You know, public service duties that we need. Sign some constitutional laws, possibly. Mm-hmm. You know, negotiate with foreign dignitaries. But now that we have this bureaucratic deep state, like it becomes pretty important who the person is that's running all that because that's the executive branch that's running this. And we'll talk about a part of that coming up with the Department of Labor here uh, later on because they're doing something that that drives me nuts. But the the problem is the government has too much power. Even when you talk about, uh, I was I was uh, listening to someone talk about the Epstein thing, and people trying to influence power and what you know, taking them and filming them, and then having control. Where the problem is that they have the power in the first place. You shouldn't be able to influence and get them, be able to control them and get them to do what you yeah. want, because the power shouldn't even exist. And therefore, then Epstein wouldn't exist, and then therefore, child sex slavery wouldn't exist if not for the government. You have the okay, answer. maybe not that far. But Here's the other question. It would still exist. Why does she look so surprised? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, her eyebrows are up there. <laughs> they, they, they are. They are. Wow. I think it's her hair is pulled back really tight. That's what yeah. it is. Kind of mm-hmm. stretching, stretching up her forehead. Could be Botox. Or like if you like pull that. back, like this is basically like kind of what's going on. Don't I look more surprised hmm. already? I don't know. Just imagine if you're getting pulled back like this, guys. We don't understand this, but. You're like this all the time. Mm. I think that's what she looks like. So it's just her hair. And you need to stop being so racist. You know, I, I would and say sexist. that if she was white, I'd so, be like, wow, those eyebrows are up there. Yeah, but you would have said in the nicer way. 